It's 9 a.m. at this Montessori in Ottawa, and these kids are about to get a lesson in something we've been hearing a lot about. Can we see germs? Can we see germs? No. <coughs> but let's imagine that we can. Nisha okay. Thampi is a mom. So she knows how kids can be. They touch everything and everyone. And let's say I shake hands with you. You want to shake hands with me? How do we get germs <coughs> off? Why shake hands? Yes. But this mother is also a doctor. So what is it that you think in the test we're actually going to find? She's the head of infection control at CHEO, a pediatric hospital. And there's something she wants to show me. What are we about to, to try to demonstrate here? You are going to show me how you wash your hands. All right. and we start by spreading a fluorescent gel onto my hands that only shows up under black light. Okay, so you can see the white... Oh, yeah. It's like a kind of white chalkiness, right? Chalkiness, okay, that's right. The point is to show how we may not be getting our hands as clean as we think. And now I'll just wash my hands like I normally mm -hmm. like would. Like you would normally okay. wash So them. I usually wet them a little bit. I'll get a little bit of soap on. And just kind of do a quick little thing, never that long. And then I wash them off. Clean. Okay. You sound doubtful. <laughs> you don't, you don't think that's enough? Let's see, let's okay. see. Okay. Needless to say, my method, too short, not thorough, only somewhat so. effective. Oh, okay. So you can see that there's still some white marking there. Right. And that can be a real issue when trying to avoid getting sick. But you got the palms. I got the palms, okay. We know that with other coronaviruses that have been studied that they can live on inanimate surfaces from hours to days. And so it would do us well to think about washing our hands when we come into contact with surfaces where, we, where there may be a risk of contamination. And the opportunity for contamination is indeed everywhere. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some of this fluorescent powder this time around, simulate a sneeze into my hands, make some tea in the office kitchen, and then once again, pull out our trusty black light. What you start to realize very quickly is how many things you touch with those dirty hands in doing the simplest of tasks. But let me show you. So first things first, we are going to check the kettle. And boy, you can see fingerprints right along the inside, all over the top. And right on the front there too. Come over to the sink. We can see right on the handle there, germs spreading, went to the fridge. Oh yeah, and we can see all that along there. It's over the tea box, it's over the milk, even around the mouth where the milk comes out. And look at the cup. So if these were real germs, the chance of someone else coming into contact with them and getting them on their hands Pretty high. So what's the best way to get those germs off? Dr. Thampi shows me the World Health Organization's method, six distinct motions. Scrub the palms between the fingers, wash the back, wash the back, twirl the tips around, scrub them upside down, thumb attack. Now, if all that, especially the last bit, sounds a tad childish, well, that's the point. The WHO method, but set to a familiar tune. That's Dr. Thampi's creation. And she goes class to class teaching it. Between the fingers. Now, keep in mind, these kids are all between three and five. The task daunting. How many germs do you think are in your hands? Lots. Lots? Like how many? Thousand. Thousand? <laughs> Julie, I'm going to shine the black light at your hand and I'm going to see how many of the germs you got off. You ready? Do you see how it's kind of sparkling? 
I thought you said you got all the germs off. <laughs> okay, show me the back. How many germs did you say were on your hands again? 13. 13 germs? You think you got all 13 off? You ready? Let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. According to a study good. published in the right, American that's... Journal of Infection Control, kids who learned an organized, regimented way of hand washing had dramatically lower absentee rates from illness. And another study out of the UK found the method being taught here to be the international gold standard. In case you're wondering, these very same steps apply to hand sanitizer as well. And technique is important because it's only a matter of time before something that's gotten onto your hands gets onto your face. We do it to ourselves all the time. Over the course of about an hour working in my office, I touched my face 20 times. And that is very typical. There is a very well-cited study talking about how individuals touch their face on average 23 times an hour. 23 times? Mm -hmm. And it's just, I mean, just like little like things you're touching like, your face like scratching now. your, yes. right. <laughs> and nearly half the time we touch our face, we're touching precisely the parts where viruses get in our eyes, nose, and mouth. Risky behavior without even realizing it. But hopefully, good habits can change that. But these are very hard among adults, and that's why I enjoy having these conversations with kids, because they're still learning. Nose picking is not an issue in the adult world, but it's a real issue in the children's world. Grab them upside down. A lesson learned with a few simple lyrics for kids and adults alike. Thumb attack. 